200 baht also. Can you do meter? Oh, oh you can't be What tough is German? What tough is Do you have meter? Yeah, I, I'm funny. Ah, uh, this is a hot topic in Bangkok at the moment and it's it's becoming a real problem. The driver was caught on a viral video charging the tourist 700 baht for a 7-kilometer trip, which was considered almost seven times more expensive than what it should be and the standard fee. The infamous taxi scam is back here in Bangkok and it's becoming a real problem. There's a major crackdown on it at the moment. So in today's video, I'm going to give you a look at exactly what this scam is, how you can avoid it, things to look out for and how to avoid it completely and ride a taxi here like a local. So over the last two years, it's been really easy to take a taxi here. You just get in, tell them where you're going. They pop the meter on and off you go. But now that tourism's back, that's all changed here. So what's actually happening is now often you'll get in the taxi or sometimes you don't even get to get in the taxi. They'll pull up and ask you where you're going and they'll just make up a price for where they want to take you. Now, the price may seem reasonable if you're comparing back to your prices of what you pay in a taxi back home, but it's not. It's completely unreasonable and it's illegal. The police are actually cracking down on this at the moment. So I've seen them do roadblocks along Sukhumwit Road where they pull in basically every taxi and check that they've got the meter on them. They're not ripping people off. Also at Khao San Road, it can be quite challenging to get a taxi there late in the evening if you're there having a late night partying. So what will happen is, and I've had this happen to me, I've gone up to the taxi and they try and charge you a ridiculous amount because if you don't get in, it's like take it or leave it basically. So what the police do, in my instance, I was there, I was arguing with the taxi driver, a bit of back and forth, and the police came over and they made him turn the meter on and then we drove off. So what actually happened was the guy got around the corner, turned off the meter and kicked me out. <laughs> but the police are still trying to crack down on it at the moment. I need to go to Asok. Yes, I know. Asok, sorry, yeah. 21. Yep, yep. meter? Asok station. Yes, yeah, yeah. Oh, 150. 150, no, no, no. 100? No, 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 no. Do you have meter? Oh, sorry, sorry. Sorry, no meter? 100 baht. No, 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 meter, sorry. So what I've heard is, and I know this sounds crazy, but keep in mind this is Thailand, so you can actually dob them in if they're trying to scam people or rip people off, and you actually get a reward for that. So they get fined basically. So every taxi driver, they've got a little ID card on their dashboard, and you can note down the ID or take a photo of it on your phone. And if you report them for trying to scam you or rip you off, then they have to pay a fine and you get a small percentage of that fine. This just goes to show how seriously they're taking it here and how much they're trying to get rid of this problem. Now, the best way to get around is to use an app like Grab or Bolt. They're essentially like Uber here and that's the best way because it locks in a price and you know the price is fair and you know they're not going to try and haggle with you along the way. So you may think, what's the big deal, you know, paying 200 baht to go to where you need to go? It's not that much money. It's what, $6 or whatever and that's considerably cheaper than a taxi back home. But to give you an idea of what you can get for that money, if you were to go from here to the central Bangkok, Sukhumwit area, back to the airport, it would cost you 240 baht if you use an app like Bolt. So for you to go just a couple of blocks and pay 200, that's ridiculous. Now, for some reason, Bolt doesn't always work here in the Sukhumwit area. I think a lot of people either turn it off or they're not coming around here with Bolt on. But if you go to other parts of Bangkok, once you get out of that main central part of the city, Bolt is great and you can use it all the time. I mean, it still works here. There's just long wait times. Yeah, right now, as I look, there's an 18 minute wait for the next Bolt. So. If that's the case, then you're going to have to take a taxi. Hello. Can I get to Terminal 21? One do, you, do you have meter? No. One hundred baht again. F 50 baht. Um, one hundred baht, okay. Oh, uh, no, that's okay. No problem. So the general rule of thumb is if they're driving up to you and you see the passenger side window start to come down, abort. That's an instant red flag. Just don't even bother because there's going to be a discussion and you don't need that. So the law actually states the taxi drivers have to take you no matter where you want to go here within Bangkok, within reason obviously, and they must use the meter when they're doing so. So there's no real reason to have that back and forth. You should be able to just jump in and tell them where you're going. Now as for these guys that are just stopped on the side of the road along Sukhumwit, I wouldn't even bother. Hey, 
Can you take me to uh, Central World? Central World, yes. Traffic jam. Traffic jam? Yeah, uh, 200 baht. 200? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Traffic jam. Can you do meter? Oh, traffic jam or what? Traffic jam. Okay, thank you. That guy just flat out wouldn't take me. So for me personally, I never have issues taking taxis here in Bangkok and that's because I do it like a local. So how do you do that you ask? Let me show you. Now there's two very important steps to taking taxis like a local here and if you follow these steps, you shouldn't have any issues and you should be charged a fair amount. Now the first step is to approach with confidence, walk up to the back door, open it, get in, close the door and tell them where you're going. Don't ask them any questions, don't ask how much it's going to cost. If you approach it with this attitude, they'll get the impression that this is how you always take taxis and they'll be much less likely to try any funny business. Now the second step, and this is no surprise, speak Thai. So if you're coming here to Thailand or if you come here frequently or spend any amount of time here, this is the most important Thai that you can learn. This is going to save you a whole lot of money, headaches. It's by far the most useful Thai you can learn. And the good news is, I can teach you. So when you get in, the first thing you're going to want to say is bye. So this means go or to go to in this instance, followed by the destination. So you would say bye if you're going to Ekamai, bye Ekamai. And then you would give it the polite formal ending, which is cup if you're a guy or car if you're a girl. If you want to sound a little bit more local, you can soften it up by saying na cup. Na doesn't actually have a meaning, it's kind of a filler word, but it also makes it a little bit more friendly as well. So using that example, if you're going to Ekamai, you would say ba Ekamai BTS na cup. Now one thing to note is that you're going to want to speak in as much of a Thai accent as you can because a lot of these people don't understand English or your accent may be quite hard for them to understand. As an example, instead of saying BTS, you would say BTS because they kind of pronounce the S like that. So by Ekamai BTS na cup. So this is it, it's that easy. All you need to do is approach with confidence, speak what I just taught you and watch what happens. Sawadee kaap. Bye, ekamai piti at nakap. Kopun kaap. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. There you go. A fair taxi transaction the way it should be. Now the question I get asked a lot is do you need to tip in a situation like that? So the general rule is Thai people don't generally tip. Tipping is not a necessary thing here. So if someone gives you exceptional service you tip but for the most part Thai people don't tip here. So in that situation I gave a tip because the guy did the right thing and I want to encourage that. I would just tell them to round up or whatever to keep the change. But tipping, if they're doing the right thing like that, helps encourage that. So what you got? Bye. So I ship song. Thank you. And there we are, two for two. So I almost took my head off as I was getting in the taxi just then. But it made me think of something to be aware of. So if you're getting into a taxi, especially along here on Sukumit Road, be careful because the sidewalk's quite high. And if you open the, the door too far, it'll scuff on the sidewalk and you'll end up having to pay a hell of a lot more than what's on the meter. So I know it may seem like I'm being over the top or being dramatic about this. I know the dollar amounts aren't that much. You know, a, a couple of them today were quite reasonable when they were asking for the amount of money that they wanted. But one thing to keep in mind is these people are stealing. They're not only ripping you off, they're also ripping off the companies that they work for or they represent. Normally the companies would get a cut of everything that's on the meter. So if they're not putting it through there, then they're essentially stealing from their company. Another thing to keep in mind is this is the best possible scenario right now. It's the middle of the day on a weekend. So there's not much traffic. There's not much demand. There's not many people out and about hailing down taxis. If you're out late at night on a Friday night, as an example, it's a completely different story and the dollar amount, it goes right up. So make sure you use my tips for getting around and taking taxis in this city. You'll see it's a much different experience. <laughs> <laughs> 